but in the 21st century, it is not enough. We have got to expand beyond just the same. We are not abandoning any. We are saving 100%. The elderly, the infirm, the disabled, the children who are children at an embryonic level. In these cryopreserved vats right now, we do not want them sacrificed to, sci to science. Personhood USA's purpose is the recognition and protection of the God-given unalienable right to life of all innocent human beings as legal persons at every stage of their biological development. Evangelium Vitae, Dignitas Personae, the two encyclicals uh, that the Vatican put out dealing with the doctrinal basis for our beliefs, name Imago Dei, the the doctrine of being created in the image of God is the foundation for all pro-life activity. We as Protestants feel the same way exactly. And I am more than happy in my travels and everything else to recommend Evangelium Vitae, Donum Vitae, uh, Dignitas Personae as excellent doctrinal examples of what Christians as a whole should embrace as the foundation of our pro-life work in the 21st century. Human dignity and sanctity of life is what the subject matter is. We call it the personhood principle that we've been created in the image of God doctrinally, and we are returning to first principles in the way that we deal with politicians, the, the culture <coughs> through education, and then ultimately um, into legislation itself that would be protective of restoring full protection that we need. Roe v. Wade, um, you know, you, you've all seen it. Uh, Justice Harry Blackman, writing the majority opinion, wrote that if the suggestion of personhood of the preborn is established, the abortion right case, of course, collapses for the fetus's right to life is then guaranteed specifically by the 14th Amendment. The personhood of the preborn child is the single point on which the entire debate hinges. Now, we've known that. That's why the pro-life movement has always promoted personhood as its objective. But as a strategy, we got away from it. If we woke up tomorrow and Roe v. Wade was overturned, would our pro-life work be finished? No. No. No, no it can't be. Uh, do you know that the elderly under feudal care are actually being called post-persons? They're actually being labeled it. Do a, do a survey on Google and look up post person <coughs> for the elderly. Under a utilitarian government, that's exactly the designator that we have. Yeah. Man. Yes. We just went to a veterans talk this morning and we found out, you know, if you're disabled, you can get some money if you're a disabled vet. But we heard this morning that once you're 65, you're considered a disabled vet. Now that sort of goes in with what you're saying, that if they're making anybody over 65, doesn't matter about your health, but over 65 you are now entitled to disabled benefits. So that sort of goes? Sort of, sort of goes along. I mean, post-persons, we know that the human embryos are pre-persons, mm -hmm. uh, by scientific definition. Uh, the severely disabled are being labeled non-persons. Uh, Human animal hybrids, and we don't even have a theology for this. Uh, do you realize how extreme this sounds? I know how extreme it sounds because I can see your faces. Mm -hmm. But scientifically, we're dealing with it at the University of Georgia, where the number one cloning scientist in the United States resides. We're dealing with it at Georgia Tech through the biosciences and at Emory University where they're growing pigs that are part human, part part pig. The reason for this is it's called transgenic science, and some of it, believe it or not, has been okayed by all faiths. By all, you know, because it's not a violate. We eat bacon, don't we? We ingest bacon. I, I say it's good. I'm from the South. Uh, you know, the, the fact is that you can take an animal and you can add a human gene to it so that it can grow organs that won't be rejected in a human body through organ transplant? Or what if you grow a human heart in a pig? Or what if you grow human blood in any animal that is 100% human blood grown in an animal? 
It's called farming, P-H-A-R-M-I-N-G. Farming is the new scientific agricultural term of growing heart pig valves. Anybody know anybody that's oh, had yeah. a pig valve? Yeah. Uh, insert, have any problem with that? Have we had any moral outcry? No. There are some legitimate uses for transgenic models, but there is some very, very evil uses. In UK, they're taking human children from these infertility cryopreserved vats, and they're extracting their nucleus, killing the child right then. Then they take this 46 chromosomes of their DNA, and they take a cow egg and they put the human nucleus into the cow egg, mitochondrial material, 2% cow, 98% human, zap it with electricity right out of a Frankenstein movie, and it comes to life and begins growing. 98% human, 2% cow. Now, can anybody tell me why they would do that? Money. They need human test subjects that don't fall under any of the government guidelines for research because they're not human. They're 98% human. Drug tests, cosmetic companies, uh, you name it, everybody's clamoring for what UK press is calling cowboys. Oh. Cowboys. I mean, it'd be tragic. It's tragic. Eight years ago, they, uh, they legalized it, and the scientific community promised not to abuse it. Last year, go online and check out the press. Even now, the press is calling the scientific community to task because they're abusing it left and right. Human nature, capitalism, you name it, whatever. If we can do it, we will. Where are the constraints? Where, where's the public outcry? Where's the public policy in our state legislatures that is placing limits on what we can do medically and scientifically to protect human dignity and the sanctity of life. And I'm going to, uh, to ask you, um, Don brought up Italy as being one of the countries in Western culture that is very protective of human life and human dignity in the areas of the emerging technologies. They're number two. Do you know who number one is? in protect, being the most protective of human dignity and the sanctity of human life. Ireland. Not Ireland. Not Poland. Not a Muslim country. Poland. Not Poland. No. The US. Not the no. US. The US. No. No. The Philippines. It's amazing. Nobody, nobody's oh, got oh, it. Yet. Argentina. No. Oh. Germany. Oh. Why? Crazy. Oh. 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 Why? Why is church? <laughs> they are the most protective because ideas have consequences. Okay? The pro life movement needs to be speaking in the very area where the challenges are occurring. How often do you hear these issues being brought up in the pro life movement today? They're, they're being brought up. I'm not, I'm not saying we failed utterly. But as a movement, we've been stuck in the 20th century, and we live in the 21st. And this is why the return to first principles and the re-establishment of the sanctity of life in our day is so essential. So essential. The, the whole thing with uh, establishing eugenics, a good birth, where you go in through these... Uh, uh, infertility clinics and you weed through the children that don't make the cut. Um, assisted suicide. We begin with a good birth and now we're going to a good death where you have a duty to die. This is where the whole Obamacare type structure in a utilitarian government, it doesn't have to be Democrat, it could be Republican. It's just a utilitarian culture that we've got to fight. And that's why when I said at the beginning, education, education, education. How do we do that? It all comes down to two routes to personhood. One is where government defines personhood, and that's evil, and that's wrong, and every time any government anywhere on the earth has tried to do it, they've got it wrong. 
we ask government to recognize the 